Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the Ravel model kit number H-1821. It's a 154 scale kit, originally issued back in 1955, and it's been re-released several times. This uh, release was uh, put out in 1999. It features a Kenworth long nose tractor transporting the Honest John missile from the manufacturing plant to an army depot. It's dismantled and crated and the missile is loaded on a Fruhoff flatbed trailer for the trip. Now you can still find these kits online at pretty reasonable prices. It's approximately a skill level 2 at that time which is uh, for the intermediate builder and it, uh, it takes some skill to fit uh, and test fit and make sure that it's together but um, probably the more difficult part is just all the number of pieces which are 110 molded in white and then there's uh, the green plastic carrier and it features a pretty detailed uh, missile and cab now um, you also get a set of uh, uh, decals and um, they could use some setting solution so uh, it, it's actually pretty detailed for the carrier and the cab and the instructions are, are pretty nice uh, it's uh, the example uh, of of what uh, what it took to arm the uh, army uh, back in uh, back in the day. And so here are the contents of the kit. Um, it comes molded in two colors: the uh, carrier in green and the missile in white. Uh, and uh, we're going to be using Model Master liquid cement for most of the construction. Occasionally, some super glue to fix things into position. Uh, and um, we'll also uh, get a look here at the uh, decals for this kit which are pretty nice. Uh, the register is good, the color is good, uh, but you may find it beneficial uh, to use some of the um, setting solutions available on the aftermarket uh, to make sure that these stick to the contours. First thing I did was wash and dry all the parts in some warm water and then let them air dry. And then uh, I pulled out the parts for the missile to begin construction and found that one of the fins was missing. So I uh, used an appropriate size uh, sheet stock from Evergreen here and just cut a new one out of it. Uh, they're a pretty simple shape. We begin construction uh, using some liquid cement and glue the missile halves and the booster halves together uh, followed by the nose cone there. And then uh, the uh, missile tail cone bracket to the missile and the booster tail cone and bracket to the booster. Now the missile is not glued to the booster and the fins aren't either. They get uh, crated up separately when complete. I filled the seams uh, on the booster and the missile uh, with some uh, modeling putty. Use your favorite brand. This is Squadron White. And so go ahead and sand that off smooth uh, to uh, smooth out those seams. And you'll notice here some toothpicks. They're attached at the back with a little super glue to hold on to the parts so they're easier to uh, paint. So as you see here, um, the missile and the booster have been given a, uh, a couple of fine uh, light coats of uh, white primer. Next, I painted uh, the rocket fins with some flat black uh, spray. Once the uh, pieces were dried, uh, I applied a coat of the um, uh, pledge floor polish uh, that uh, gives them a little sheen for the decal application later. Now pull the parts out for the uh, crates. Uh, you see them here and uh, they're all assembled. Uh, there's no surprises there. Uh, they all go together as they do in the instructions. And then we're going to glue all the crates together using some liquid cement. Um, be careful not to use too much so it's uh, a nice clean build. And I left the tops off until the completed missiles uh, will be placed inside. Now uh, you see them here attached to my uh, popsicle stick tools. Uh, and they were painted with a Tamiya uh, brown color. And then given a light uh, spray with some of the uh, Tester's acrylic wood tone paint. Next you can locate the decals for the missile. Uh, and the booster and the fins here. You can see that uh, all the decals are in position uh, and placed to uh, use some warm water. Now especially those uh, red uh, decals that go on the uh, missile, they need to have some setting solution to help them soften up and, uh, and conform to the contours of that uh, shape there. And so once those are in place you can uh, uh, squeeze out any bubbles or water that's uh, in them and then uh, leave them alone to dry. 
Once the decals had dried overnight, I gave them a nice uh, even coat of uh, flat clear paint and then removed uh, the toothpicks. With the clear flat uh, coating dried, you can place the missile booster and the fins in their appropriate crates and then uh, glue the tops on with some clear glue. Uh, micro crystal clear works pretty good or some white glue uh, will work too. Here are the components for the cab and uh, right away you'll notice that there's evidence here of early mold technology. Um, you see that the cab is split right in half longitudinally uh, which is something you wouldn't see on a modern kit. Now use some liquid cement to assemble the pieces for the cab and leave the roof off until the interior is done. So now we'll address that uh, seam and uh, it's going to take some work here, so uh, go ahead and apply your putty. And also note there's a, a quite a sink there in the driver which uh, needs to be filled in. So sand that off with some uh, fine sandpaper, about a 400 grit. And then uh, go ahead and take uh, these pieces, including the dash and steering, and uh, give them a good uh, coat of primer. Follow that up with a uh, coat of olive drab paint uh, for the uh, cab parts, steering column, and the dash. And uh, we're going to paint the um, uh, seat uh, with a product called from testers called enamel leather. Uh, it's a pretty close match to what you would have seen uh, in a vehicle like this. And next we're going to paint the driver. Um, and <laughs> it also harkens back to a, a bygone day. Note that the, the, the tractor driver here uh, is wearing a bow tie. Anyway... Um, we painted the uh, pants and the bow tie with uh, some medium green. The shirt uh, is a, kind of a British golf armor color. Uh, the hat is um, olive drab. And the, the uh, boots are black, flat black. Uh, and then face and hands are uh, flesh color. Once the driver has dried, you can uh, glue the seat uh, onto the cab there. And then the driver onto the seat using some uh, crystal clear. And the uh, instrument panel and the steering wheel then uh, into the cab using some uh, liquid cement. And finally the roof can go onto the cab with some uh, crystal clear again. The remaining assembly of the cab uh, uh, goes onto the chassis and will be completed after the paint paint's done. Now locate the uh, engine uh, front wheels and the front suspension pieces there in the frame and we'll start to work on that front end. Um, first we're going to glue the engine halves together, uh, the manifold onto the engine, and then the front suspension and the transmission onto the chassis uh, with some liquid cement. Then uh, I used uh, what's uh, called Guards Red from uh, Testers, and then I painted the chassis engine and front wheels with that. Next we'll paint the, uh, the front tires using some Testers enamel rubber. So go ahead and give the um, engine and the chassis uh, components there uh, a nice even coat of um, clear flat uh, along with the wheels. To give those components a little definition, I used a little thinned down watercolor and uh, gave them a wash so that it seeps into the crevices to uh, highlight those parts. You can see here on the right side uh, that uh, uh, wheel has been, and tire have been uh, treated to a little uh, pastel chalks uh, to kind of weather it, make it look uh, more like a used vehicle. At this time, go ahead and glue the engine uh, onto the motor mounts and the wheels into position on the front suspension. Uh, I use some crystal clear glue here. Go ahead and um, pull these parts out for the uh, rear chassis, and we'll get to work on those. And using some liquid cement. Glue the front and rear axles uh, to the drive shafts and then uh, glue the gas tank halves together and the torsion bars onto the chassis. The tanks on the truck would have been chrome. Um, so uh, in order to achieve that look, I sprayed them with uh, a gloss black coating. And then after the black dries overnight, you give them light coats of Alclad chrome paint. While that was drying, I uh, painted the rear axles and rear wheels with some of that uh, ac acrylic uh, guards red paint. And then uh, the uh, chassis also painted uh, same colors. Now, now we can apply a coat of uh, uh, clear flat uh, to both the axles and the chassis. We'll add the uh, same treatment to the rear axles there with um, the black wash from thinned down black uh, watercolor paint. 
I'll set those aside to dry. It's time to uh, paint the tires on the rear wheels, uh, the inners and the outers, uh, with some of that enamel rubber color from testers. The fifth wheel here, a uh, plate gets um, painted, uh, you know, steel color, and then once that's dry, uh, another wash with the um, black wash of watercolor. We can wet, uh, match up the other uh, wheels now with uh, some of the pastel chalk. Uh, just dust it on there to uh, give it a used look. Now match up the uh, inner and outer wheels there for the rear, and to go ahead and uh, glue those on to the axles uh, using some the crystal clear glue. Also uh, add the air tank and the fuel tank and uh, the rear axles um, all together and uh, get those ready to set aside. So get these parts out from the kit um, for uh, constructing the trailer components and we'll use some liquid cement and then glue the braces onto the loading wheels and the axle supports onto the axles. I wanted a more authentic look uh, so I used the uh, bed as a template and then cut a piece of uh, 164 inch thick plywood uh, that I'll stain and weather and glue in to act as the more official looking bed. There's a small air tank that's also chrome so um, that's uh, going to be assembled and painted uh, with gloss black and after that dries overnight uh, a nice thin coat of uh, Alclad uh, chrome uh, to finish it up. The next thing I did was uh, paint the entire trailer chassis and the wheels uh, with some of the guards red color. I used some uh, light uh, oak stain uh, to give the, uh, the bed a more authentic look. To the tires now, we'll use that uh, testers enamel rubber to uh, complete the tire portions. And then once again, uh, when that's dry, we can weather the tires with some uh, chalk and as you see here, the wheel in the upper left is left undone. The rest are finished. Apply some uh, thin light coats of clear flat to the trailer and the tires uh, to make them look more um, realistic. With the bed dry, I glued it to the um, trailer using some contact cement. The sides of the trailer are painted with some olive drab paint. Continue the weathering uh, by adding the black wash to the trailer suspension pieces. Glue all of the suspension pieces and parts underneath uh, to the trailer and just as a reminder remove any paint um, for places where you want the glue to attach uh, to get a good bond. To give the uh, wood uh, a look that it had been you know used several times for payloads I weathered it using some black and brown watercolors to just give it some uh, definition. Let's find these parts from the kit to finish up the cab along with the crewman there in the upper right. Glue the uh, oil tank halves together with some liquid cement. You see the parts here, the oil tank, exhaust stack, mirrors, horn, spotlight, and grill. Those are going to be chrome. And to get that appearance, you first lay down some gloss black paint and let that dry. After it's dried overnight, apply thin light coats of Alclad chrome paint to get that chrome finish. Spray the engine side panel uh, and the hood with some gray primer. Mask off the uh, chrome grill and the painted and paint the front bumper with some of the guards red. Apply a coat of uh, clear flat uh, to the guards red and then remove the masking tape from the grill. Paint the uh, hood and the sides of the engine there with some uh, olive drab. Locate the mounting places for your cab and scrape off any paint there. And I used some thick super glue to uh, glue the cab into place with the right fender half uh, in position. The cab is really coming together now. And we're going to um, gather up all the chrome parts for the cab and use some of the crystal clear glue to uh, mount those into place and their locations on the cab. And she's starting to look pretty good here. The uh, other crew member, which probably serves as a relief driver, was uh, painted in the same uh, color scheme as the, uh, the seated driver. And now we'll finish up the tie-down straps, which are chrome straps. And to get that, uh, again, we'll paint those with uh, gloss black, let that dry, and then give it a light coat, coat of uh, Alclad chrome. Next, you Place the uh, crates on the trailers 
and then push the uh, tie down straps into the holes on the uh, trailer. Looking pretty realistic. Uh, here's a uh, view from the rear of the uh, trailer with the tie down straps, uh, crates and the nicely done wooden bed. Next we can use plenty of warm water and apply the rest of the decals to the vehicles. Now note that um, there's not a lot of need for it but if you find some of the decals going over uh, contours or rivets etc use some of that setting solution and once the decals have dried overnight you can spray the unit with uh, testers uh, or any of your favorite brands of acrylic flat clear just check for compatibility first oh well, there you have it your kit is complete and there's plenty of opportunities for detail and even super detailing if you want to go a little further. Um, the kit looks great when it's finished uh, and would sit on anybody's shelf um, for military display and make them proud. I would um, also consider, uh, you know, the parts fit pretty well uh, for an as old uh, a model as it was. And there's only one thing uh, that would have maybe been uh, an improvement. There was no uh, window glass, so um, you could easily make that out of some clear acetate, though. And then you'd have a more authentic look for the cab. But other than that, she looks great. And if I were you, I'd buy one and put it on my shelf. Well, we hope you like this premium step-by-step -step scale model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the link, the icon in the lower right hand of any of the videos. You can also find us on Facebook and at our website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks!